Hello and welcome to this episode of that Counter Spell. Uh, we had a bit of a name change going on um, to give more of a directive and less chaos. Even though what I'm making is pure utter chaos. Because right now we can view the backside of what is to be a uh, mimic character sheet. Let's head back toward the front. The initial idea that um, something uh, we've been uh, building on together, <laughs> along with the comments from chat, and I yeah, really want to praise the people who. Uh, we gave some lovely ideas and suggestions, so among one, rat one odd, Bayama and Enigmas underscore zero. Among the people who gave inspiring ideas. So here we are going to the backside and I've been kind of debating about what it represents because it's the horde of the mimic and every player is a bit of a loot goblin. So one thing as a fellow Luke Goblin, I'd appreciate, and as a DM as well, um, is the clutter chaos that we have on the backside, like every item or at least as many as possible items as I can think of um, to be collected, drawn out. And then you can you now give up the number of the exact amount that you own. Better than have this organized list, you have um, all items <laughs> all around uh, and you can just sum down like, oh, I have uh, two, um, I have two drums right over here, something like that. Let's grab the right pencil and the right tool. Like number two, I have two drums and, and that'll be um, one hell of a job to get that done and structurized uh, within a PDF format. For yeah, silly ideas have to start somewhere, and I'm definitely gonna try and go for it. If I don't change my mind and come up with something better, of course. Something user-friendly. Because <laughs> I do want this character sheet to be somewhat user-friendly and not too too much chaos, even though it, uh, it's kind of... kind of gives price to that. But, in my fair, humbled opinion, I believe the, the, the front side kind of does work out Especially if you pan it out over the page number one, page number two, page number three. And officially, if we are going to, to you know, have the PDF format. Um, I'm, I'm debating to keep it like, like so, like one big thing. <laughs> to stare at or have the individual pages and, uh, and clip them and have the, the horde of the mimic on the back side, the flip side. Because on the flip side, um, place the, the back has to reflect on what you do on the front. So for page number one, we have the character stuff, and the stats, abilities, and so for your hoard, that would mean valuable items like coins, um, a crown, or jewels, or gems, and that sort of stuff that would be on this corner. Then we have page number two. That's everything about your character, the personal um, personal information, like history, background, backstories, quotes, uh, features, and anything that they may have or quirks. Uh, and so, uh, fun stuff, weapons, like the weapon collector, uh, instruments. Um, now, in short, I'm just going to call this a trash part because it's also where you find a bet roll, you find a random lantern or, or other things, and page number three reflects on the magical side of things so you have the spell casting right over here in page number three and the back side would be magic items now i've been thinking about that quite um quite a bit at the magic item department like is it really um that we're gonna go put stuff over there as in the bag of holding the handy haversack um uh, the never ending quiver stuff like that or Am I gonna go and and call me batshit crazy? <laughs> I'm gonna go through um, something called the components, and and that would mean like for certain spells you, you need components like ash um, um, to say something and to add a stomach or adamantine, a small piece thereof, um, a mistletoe and spruce. Uh, to, to name a couple of things, brimstone, bull hairs, butter, a caterpillar cocoon, and all the weird stuff that uh, the Wizards of the Coast came up with that, uh, that you have to use to cast spells. So things that are consumed or things that you um, 
you would just have on you for some wicked reason and it, you know you needed to 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 have it on you in order to cast a certain spell and i i thought of that like that could be super funny too like a collection of these trinkets that you have to have on you to cast a spell like clay copper water uh and also a water skin now that i think of it can i squeeze it in plus water skin somewhere in and regular items items like things that you use on the go and here we're gonna make the note spell components gonna shorten that one down to come so I already made a copy and look look I'm gonna empty this area and as a fun extras I could always you know add some magical items to be collected but maybe spell components aren't so bad too I have that right over here be very tiny um i i'm gonna give credit to someone who has gone through the immense amount of trouble to summarize every or at least um when they made it a material spell components list in an excel sheet and i'm using that one right now as a um yeah a, as a means to to get an overview of what the spell components uh, are because there's a lot of material it's it's a lot and someone went through the meticulous trouble to sum everything down <laughs> and it's uh that's amazing <clears throat> now this person you can find them on reddit and i believe they go by the name <laughs> hiller my life and it's about seven years ago that this was done so i, I don't imagine everything to be on <laughs> on on the Excel sheet, more well, at least a lot, a heck lot. I'm gonna post this uh, username, the Reddit username in chat. A special shout out over here. No clue if they have any uh, Twitch or streaming services, but kudos, kudos for summing everything down at that time about spell components and materials that are used. if there is a uh, sort A to C just going quickly by it I just wanted to know we have uh, Revivify Revivify is um, a spell that has uh, diamonds that the spell consumes and is worth um, diamonds of 300 gold coins oof also big oof that's yeah the spell consumes it but that's kind of what you get because you have to pay for it all yeah <laughs> wowzers all right well without further ado let's uh, take a good look at the material source and i'm gonna sort them alphabetically a to c Ah, there's Ember, uh, Air. I'm, I'm probably not going to draft up Air. But this cork was something I, uh, <laughs> I am going to draft up here. Like a cork. Woo! Um, behind the cork could be... Alum soaked in vinegar. Okay, that, that is an interesting thing. So we have cork right over here then and, and I can place a bottle behind it. If you have any suggestions or things that you'd like to say, uh, feel free to use the chat. And uh, who knows, maybe I'll incorporate your ideas into this mighty fine character sheet. Like alum soaked in 
Howlem. Um, you know, I'm just going to make some, some bubbles over here. I have to probably look up what Alum is. Uh, then there's the Adder's stomach. I don't imagine that to be very big, but... Um, It, it's it's not worthy to have some some trinkets in there like that are too tiny to even ride on, but funny to see and look back at. Pile of ash. And as a lot of ash that's being used, a tiny bell. I'm gonna place there the bell beside the, the ash. Bit of a memorial and an ode to a certain player character that I had in one of the campaigns that I used to host and I'll post it like so. Boop, boop, boop. There we go. A black pearl, but then crushed as a powder. There's a lot of powders going on. And some crushed diamonds. Um, if I gotta do the whole crushed powder stuff, then um, probably gonna draw the object that has to be crushed besides it. So we have a couple of gemstones. Mistletoe. I'm just gonna Whoop. Go. And bitumen, I have no clue what bitumen even may be. I how do I draw bitumen? Hmm. Yeah. Interesting. Uh we have black silk, a square. It could be draped over here. Like a sheet or something, a sheet of silk. <laughs> They're more in the background. As long as I can still <laughs> make sense out of it, what my drawing is supposed to mean or be, then I'm all good when it comes down to line art and working on it. Alright, so uh, black onyx stone. I'm gonna put that over here on the bundle of uh, scribbles that is not making a lot of sense. Blood! Well, how about we use a tube like a test tube uh, with a stopper on it and it has some uh, conspicuous. Uh, liquid in there. A broken bone. be a little more clear. I mean, we have some interesting bones. Let's say it's going to be one of those bones that you often buy in a pet shop or your dog. And this is kind of a dog that spits acid, so yeah, why not? 
brimstone, it's not a stone, bone dust, also a thing, but pile of dust is right beside it, so. Um, a couple of bull hairs. Be a nice tuft. Like a nice little bundle. There. I get to do the brimstone. Let's make that this this orb like stone. And I'll get to that later on. A caterpillar cocoon. Oh, that's tiny. There. <laughs> We have chalk and inks fused with precious gems. That sounds like a concussion. Uh, con yeah. Oof. Ha. Um. Well, I could make a chalk over here, like chalk. We. It's a thing. Clay is also a thing. And, and let's say um, that smushed on. The lower side, but top could still be a square. And maybe some incense burners sticking out from it from behind. All right. So we do have the chalks and inks infused with precious gems. How would that look like? Aha! How about one of those things? A lot of people have them in their kitchen too. And back in the day they were also used some still for the same purpose. We use them today to crush herbs. Um, perhaps not so much in the stone department but So they can crush all of the ingredients that they need. Um, inks. Well, this was a precious stone, gemstone corner. Or oh, perhaps a ruby here, there. And... We all know that from money and movies that they had particular kind of herbs. Lavender and sage, why not? It's one of the most common two things to have. Crystalloid powder, 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 powder. Could be a pouch. Yeah, it's becoming a very nice trash pile. I love it. <laughs> Water clay model of a ziggurat. I have to look this one up really quickly. Ah. Huh. So there's a spell, it, called, it, it is named Tongues, and it's a third level definition spell. Um, range is upon touch, and lasts for one hour. So it grants you the ability to understand any spoken language. Um, it hears, or the creature you touch, that is. But, um... It's very interesting. It has, um, as a components, it's a uh, verbal and material. But, um... 
I would almost say somatic too because you have to touch them one, but who am I? Anywho, the materials contain of a small clay model of a ziggurat. And I will have to look up what a ziggurat is. Oh. Ah. So a ziggurat is um some sort of temple. That is interesting. I never knew that was a name that was, you know, that it was called Ziggurat. That, uh, that's, um... Alright, interesting. We're gonna place that model right over here, because why not? And I'm looking at some internet references. Uh, so we have our Ziggurat. <laughs> that's almost a shame to cast that spell, like... Oh, um... I'm gonna let this person, you know, understand about everything. Like a Tower of Babylon. That is such a shame to wage. waste a clay model of a ziggurat. I mean, it looks so precious. It's like an entire temple. And I'm making the cigarette uh, model a wee bit bigger because, um, why not? Has a nice spot over there. <laughs> there we go. Nice. Uh, Copa Moya. Club. Ha, <laughs> the club. So, when I, whenever I read the word club, um, I imagine, like, two barbarians, um, and one standing the other one like want to go clubbing tonight and instead of you know having the rave party they just you know beat up a bunch of poor goblins this could be a club it up together. So why not? Along with some parchment. Um... And just want to make sure that the I still can can tell where the incense is going, but yeah. No, I see. All right. A cloth wad, a cloak miniature. A miniature of a cloak. All right. So. What? A cloak miniature, huh? Like a tiny cloak for a mouse or something. Call it sand. Well, we have the sand and dust pile right behind us, but I'll we'll add another pile to the pile. Some copper wire. Corn. Alright, so. Aside from everything casual, there also appears to be corn. Um, I'm just gonna draw the entire kernel or thing with, you know, stuff. Hmm. A uh, cricket. So Jiminy Cricket is in there too. Boop boop. Cricket in a box. Let's uh let's make that one sure. Like <laughs> cricket in a box. Going for that one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 
All right. Already had the diamonds, but there's some curt letter. Um, so I am drawing the frame of wood and have some. To make sure like oh hey there's leather in in the making so eh. and i i know could, could leather maybe not the same thing but that has to be visually um <laughs> a thing to have all of the spell components or at least a resemblance there of um happily drafted And maybe the, the backside of this gig sheet is just for fun. For the heck of having a backside. I imagine it to be fun when printing. There. Mm -hmm. Crystal sphere. Very small crystal sphere. Oh, alrighty, oh, and um, I'm gonna pull that one over here. Small crystal sphere. Uh, why? Well, it, it's a component. And we have crystal bead. Um, let's say you have an entire necklace of that one lingering about. Let's put a um No you know those uh two barbarians uh going clubbing tonight. I think they got some beats to them. Just decorating this club over here with um a necklace uh that has beats. That is made from beads. That tree is from the target creature. Hmm. Nails, it could be clippings of hair, etc. So, that tree is everything. Uh, reminds me of um, Legend of Zelda, where you can get toenails from a Heliox uh, thingy creature. <clears throat> Enox, that was the name I was looking for. So, uh, let's make that a nasty toenail from a giant or something. Why? Well, it's 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 D&D. What, what are you expecting? Boom 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 boom. So we have toenail right over here. Toenail clipping. Love that. Just behind the um, frame. Yep. Yep 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 yep. And and there's a crystal file with a fluorescent um. for some um, material hmm Whew. well uh, luckily I have some notes coming along with uh, with this uh, Excel sheet and the one who made it hello my life I uh, gave up the note on um, like so like a lava lamp genius and I I agree more with it because that's something I can actually I put in visualization like have a bit of a lava lamp structure going on here
with swirling contents, um, definitely stop it. Or, you know, contained. Whee! Probably get some light blowing. All right. Bum, bum, bum. Oh, there's a lot of diamond dust and a lot of diamonds, so I better make sure that the diamond corner is going to be rat. Diamond corner. With a lot of shinies. Dirt. Alright, so we have some dirt. Um, a couple of small pebbles and stone. See that as a complete toenail. We have the steel spirit also being one of the components. Um and that's for the spell called false life. I'm going to check this one out because it sounds like this, this could be one of those things that may have been um, altered, but I'm not sure. So it's a spell called 5th edition. What's life? Small amount of alcohol or distilled spirits. Right, that makes sense. Now, uh, much like every alcoholic out there, uh, I'm just going to draw a wine bottle. Or when your spellcaster kind of needs to consume uh, the spirits. And this particular wine bottle, I want it to go in front of the frame that we have. And when I go detailing, uh, what I also want is um, it's like fairies on it. The label is like wine, fairy wine, fairy dust, something resembling the distilled spirits. Bit of an inside joke. A uh, divinatory tools. Oh, bones, sticks, cards, teeth, runes, dice. Ooh, dice. How about we randomly have some dice? All around the place. Lost random dice in our clutter and some cards. And I have to think of the deck of many things whenever I start drawing cards. And these cards will have runes. Cards with runes. Can I write that down somewhere? Yes, I can. Cards with runes. Hmm, it could be a good one. So I believe that rune for magic. I'm gonna hide one over here as well. And A wee bit tiny, but I'm trying to, to draw the one that resembles spirits or spirits or uh, um, a DT. Okay. Water. There we go. At least that is the rune I believe for water. Bloop. 
Uh, maybe some more bones. We already had a bone. Bone to pick. Maybe some chicken bones or something. Like a wishbone. Ha <laughs> ha. Flip, flip. It's a very large uh, pupa, just a very large caterpillar. Random bone. More bones, I mean, from your foes and stuff. You know, collection, collecting all kind of moments like uh one finger bone at a time or something when you cast let me see boom, boom. and that is find the bath um is a spell as a decent value but it doesn't consume the um, ingredients so but you can never have enough bones because there may be spells that do consume the bones. So, yeah. All right. A dried carrot. Because, yeah, you, you know, carrots. Um, I'm going to make a bundle of carrots right over here. That's... Whenever you need some carrot juice. Dog fishing. <laughs> uh, earth, woo, and water mixture. Eggshells. Ooh, eggs. Oh, they, they're gonna smell bad. Um, I'm going to put egg right over here. Have fun with these uh, wobbler eggs or, or, or whatever eggs that you came across and thought, I'm gonna... And I use these as components. Eggs. There we have it. Eggs. And from the eggs you can, of course, get eggshell. And you need eggshells for the spell called Big Big Bee's Hand. Nice. Love it. Um... <laughs> Engraving of the symbol of the outer planes. Oh, um, maybe like a star card of things. Uh, I'm gonna put it over here. Oh, that looks like a face. What I want. Kind of meant it as a chip star card thing. Maybe better yet, um, a scroll in between this mess and chaos. Some scribbles on it. And uh, what is that jingle jangle with the planetary system uh, thing? Maybe a piece of rock that looks like a moon. Also nice in the collection. And gravings of a symbol of the outer planets.
there. And I'll fix that whenever I get to it. We have an exquisite chest made of rare materials. Do I smell a mimic eating another mimic? No, I'm just gonna place uh, this dapper exquisite chest right over here in, in a treasure hall. Oh, there's going to be so many tiny details. Whoop. And for my own peacekeeping, I'm, I'm going to save this lovely Excel sheet that I stumbled upon. It is amazing. And if I would save it, it's a hundred and thirty seven pages. Kudos. Safe. And safe. also have some eyeballs um, maybe that's funny for a jar uh, like putting a, a jar right over here like one of those standard jars that everyone has in their kitchen piece of cloth wrapped around it and it, it is filled with eyeballs it's like your spellcaster has a very weird collection of all sorts of items oh. Those are the things needed for for your spell components, and I think that is actually more for thing than. Ooh, we have magical items. We're collecting magical items, and yes, but the thing that you collect probably more without knowing so is your spell components, because you you cast spells left and right as a spellcaster. So, I rather than magical relics that you may want to um, that you may happen upon once in a while. The thing that you collect constantly or the spell components. Might want to put the stuff in the background. And I am going to... Scale. Oh, radio. And of course I'm going to incorporate some magical trinkets here, there. Uh, but I don't want them to be too... Too obvious. I think our spell components are very nice. Oh, feather. That's for fireflies. Fishtail. So among things, oh, we're gonna go put a fish on a chicken there, so you have plenty of feathers and herbs. Wing from many birds, so a feather of a hummingbird. Ooh, feather of an owl. 
uh, Feather Exotic for the Wind Wall. <laughs> and we have a jar of eyeballs. We also have this lovely jar with fireflies. Maybe they're dead, but um, and I have to work on it because the firefly is um, a bit of a bug. On the top of my head, I'd have to look it up. And they're far tinier than you you might want to admit. Like they're such small creatures. Boom, boom, boom. Belt spa. Hmm. More ingredients to hang up from the ceiling. Or at least, um, this be mimic ceiling. Some twigs over here, some spa twigs. And owl. Or at least a feather of an owl. Yeah, yeah, feather of an hour or the entire thing. So I do know that um, my character uh, that I play every Wednesday uh, as a player kind of, you know, didn't care for what bird was flying there and then, you know, doesn't really matter. And so he shot down, um, took down an owl for consumption and kind of got a bit of a beating from the stick from his familiar for, yeah, you don't eat owls. So I have a player character that is right falling into the meme of, oh, you're going to eat that. Bit of a pin. And we have the white felt spot fireflies. We do have fireflies. We have fish there. We have flame. Uh, there's incense and we want fire in a jar. Why not? Why not? <laughs> I mean, there's folk. One of those fancy bottles that, um, It's not quite possible uh, to have a flame in a jar unless it's a fake flame. Because fire needs air. So unless you have holes in your bottle uh, or somehow still being capable of incorporating or, or feeding along with, you know, fuel. That fire, it's, it's not going to last long in, in, in a jar. There you go. But d, d magic, so I'm using the magic excuse. Go. Oh, living fleas to cast a spell infestation. I mean, <laughs> it's like you, you, this. This doesn't kind of feel like um you're casting a spell. This feels more like I'm throwing fleas at the enemy and then run for it. <laughs> I'm a spell caster, really, corner crone. Look at these fleas. Wee. <laughs> yeah, that's how you become infested by fleas. <laughs> A living flea. Oh, oh, yeah, my word. Five stars. <sighs> hmm. Let's say it's a nice little powder box right over here. Containing fleas. Because fleas are so tiny, um... I'll zoom in for this. So, 
out of the box. Definitely mate from root or something. Yeah, yep, yep, yep. That's in there. And hello, Red Main Knight of Five. Welcome. Ooh. There's also fleas. I'm going to leave that one uh, a little bit open and I'm doing good. Thank you. How are you doing? Oh, you're a bit nervous because your second campaign will start in a few hours. No, don't be nervous. You're gonna be fine. Let the dice do the magic. But yeah, I, I, I can understand that. I can get that. For me, I... Oh. Ooh. Ooh. Haha. <laughs> it's more than, uh, more than a decade ago that I started um, with my first uh, campaign as a player. So are you playing or are you going to host uh, host a game as a game master or dungeon master? playing nice so so if you'd like to tell me more about what you're playing um like the class a race um i'm really curious i'd love to know more <laughs> yes, please. I I'd, I'd like that. It's a thing that I almost live for creating characters. I have way too many NPCs as well as a DM. Like it's over nine thousand, almost. N not literally nine thousand, but yeah. It's um at least more than I think two hundred by now. And gilded acorn.
All right, time to read. So the character concept that you have is a knight who is loyal to the core, but after a battle of massive proportion, he was knocked out of, um, knocked out in battle and woke up on a beach in a foreign land where the deed and the fame of his lord was unknown. So he sets out to preach about his lord's deeds and fame throughout this foreign land. Wow, that's very nice. I like it. Amazing. Sounds good. I'm pretty sure you'll have a whole lot of fun. Uh, you could take this to whimsical or very serious, like a Falcon Star Trek uh, kind of reference. But uh, yeah, to, to stick with the D&D terms, you could take this to many, many ways. Lovely. No problem, you're welcome. <laughs> glass silver we have a green plant um we have some arabic um arabian gum it's probably from the gum tree um i'm just gonna draw some bark right over here like a piece of random box sticking out of there and Whimsical, we have a rooted plant. A whole lot of herbs and things going on. I don't think I can fit. I can squeeze perhaps a few more items in there, but ooh, a holy symbol, and that's worth it. Put that in the back of my, in the back of the whole trash pile. That is uh, coming quite a thing. And I, d I do know that we, um, on the previous session, the previous stream, kind of mentioned that th this was going to be fun stuff like weapons um, and real, like the trash collection. But now that I'm looking at it, like looking at what I did, I think I just made the magic trash compartment. <laughs> like that is a lot. That's a lot of stuff that is being used to cast spells, like the material components. Oof. Um. So on second thought, I don't want this drum to be that big. This, you know, spell department. Uh, what do we have? We could have a book to write in, like a, a journal. Uh, and with the journal comes ink. Ink is something that um, is being used. And a quill. I can ploop. There'd be books, a quill. What else do we have? That we'd have to, the lantern, the hooded lantern. And I would say that this, this would be a nice spot to know. Um, start with the diggers. Like the weapons. And perhaps there's a pillow, perhaps 
there, there are characters who drag down the pillow or you know it's like <laughs> or not could be a tiny pillow could be a large pillow depending on what your character's needs um when you drew the bat rolls tied up right over there in the corner that is something i can still recognize and make out of it but as for this pillow i'm um, i'll make it a little bit more obvious that it is a pillow but adding little things to its side So his background is uh, is for Traveller and the character is named Sir Gwyn the Bold. He's a human um, oath of the Crown Paladin. Nice. For Traveller. Yeah, that makes sense if he wakes up in this foreign land on a beach. Wow. Amazing. Maybe trying to keep the bot in mind as well, uh, along with many other players, um, holy symbol that, um, quite hidden <laughs> right over here but th those are also part of the fun stuff collection so I'm just gonna add another holy symbol right over here that I will have to work on <laughs> Transform and pick this one up. Oh, right here, it makes some room. Load a pillow and stuff it there. Oh, it's one of those items that is in front of the pillow. <laughs> I'm going to put down um, a quiver over here because that would be something that is typically uh, for the ranger with a couple of arrows sticking out. It's like all of the clutter that uh, people unknowingly um, collect, that's a thing. Like casual clutter, uh, magical clutter, uh, and then you have the, the clutter that is um, treasure. Or consider considered treasure. It's like, oh, valuable. Not always. Thing. I want this quiffer to be beautifully decorated, but it is just a regular uh, quiffer, it's nothing magical. 
that's in front of the magic symbol or at least a holy symbol maybe a flask of holy water uh, stacked over here And incoming weapons, um, that starting with a mall. Well, I kind of started with a dagger, something small. Warhammer. Yeah, they're not as ridiculously big as you might uh, think um, when when you look at history. And I know for D and D, it's it's a fantasy genre, a fantasy game, and people like to exaggerate these things. But I prefer the, the slim designs because they were they were made that way for a reason. So I think works the way it works and. Um, yeah, fun, fun, fun stuff all to decide, like, oh, I could increase the, the, the hammer pot, like, humongous, but there's no need for that. Mm -hmm. How about... Like, what good horde would this be without a halberd? Emotional support halberd, as uh, how my, one of my uh, players would refer to his halberd that he received in game. It's one of my favorite weapons. There are many variations of this ha uh, of this weapon as well because you know every culture had their kind of halberd-like weapon. May have a different name, but it uh, serves the same function. Uh, I quickly, from the top of my head, drafted a bit of a European design. Uh, the one that came to mind. Uh... Um... Great sword, and that one I am going to. Uh... Makes some of the players very happy that love uh, extremely large weapons that are brutally large, too large to even lift, like the Berserker fans. It's like the, it's illogical, but it's there. Roll. 
a backpack. We do have a lantern in a corner. Um. All right, so I'm, I'm going to give you the run through. Um, you're asking very nicely. I'm going to start where Oop. it is most understandable. And this is a fifth edition mimic character sheet. And to run you by it page by page, at least where, where I've been, uh, what I've been doing. So the initial page, uh, page number one, is where you have your stats and everything. I'll have that way over here as well. Page number one. Official character sheet from the Dungeons and Dragons and um, I'm not here to improve their character sheet. I'm here to make um, exactly what the title says, a mimic character sheet. So a character sheet that is a mimic at the same time and the holder of all of your information for your character to play with. So fun. I'm doing this for fun. That is the, the short story. And uh, I only grab the, the most essential things that you'd need to play your character as I'm drafting and designing this character sheet. So on page number one, we have the abilities. We have that um, as well on the official character sheet. We have your combat corner, all of the things you need for combat. Your HP in a HP bottle hidden. Uh, your temporary HP also in a bottle. And then you have your uh, your bonus, your proficiency bonus so in a teeth. Uh, your armor class also hidden in the teeth. How fast you can run also marked in uh, in the teeth. An initiative bonus also in the teeth. And the stats um, are uh, are in these metal orbs and some acid drool uh, over it. So you have your your um, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, the stats are right over there. Uh, passive perception and this big eyeball. Uh, the saving throws are going on the tongue of the mimic. Um, there are some coins. And I yet have to draw the coins from D&D. We have your uh, copper, your silver and your gold. And in the hoard of the mimic, you may find everything on the back side. That is what the mimic. Or at least that is what the player characters would naturally hoard. And you bring a lot more trash with you um, than what you may think at first. And that's kind of what I'm trying to poke fun at at the same time and have something nice to look at. But that's the back side. And this is the front. The front has a function, a character portrait. So that's the midsection of your character sheet, page number two. Everything about your character, the age, the eye color, the height, skin color, weight. Um, hair color, the backstory. So that's why your backstory would go. Uh, quotes, um, one word that would describe your character. And I kind of dipped it over there as the corner stinky. But you can, you could definitely use it to, uh, you know, use it as you see fit. Because these are going to be blank spaces where you can fill in all the needs that make the character yours. The bonds uh, can be names that can be written down in the chain link. So I thought of that to be funny. The death saving throws are going to be on the handles. Um, a spell tracker that can be found in the other handle. I have yet to figure out how to make that one uh, work. Uh, spell attack bonus, and that's going to be in the d20. Also stuck in the teeth of the mimic. Uh, a spell list, a literal spell scroll stuck in the teeth of the mimic. A spell class, um, a spell saving throw or the DC and all those gimmicks. So that is the very functional front and the back side is becoming more fun and and <laughs> whimsical um, as in it's not needed, it's, it's obsolete, but I, I like it. It's more of a pointing out how much trash you actually drag with you on your journey. So yeah, summer down the inside of the Mimic. All what the Mimic eats, all what the Mimic is, represents all what the players can, you know, collect. So 
Mimic's collection is what players collect, and that is a lot. Especially now that I've gone through the spell components, the material spell components that I'm often used for casting spells, otherwise you're not going to get anywhere. Oh, that's a lot! And I haven't really, you know, defined the, um, the left side. And the left side is going to be all of the valuables, so the coins, uh, gems, uh, and, and even though we have a gem corner, a diamond corner, and the spellcasting corner as well, I, I want to lay more treasure, hoardy stuff right over there, like a crown, um, a chalice, uh, those kind of things that people would get and sell. <laughs> the looters, <laughs> along with a weapon stack over here, bet roll. Uh, everything that you could find in in your handy haversack or your back of holding those kind of things um things the players drag with them holy water a lantern and i often think to myself as well what, what are my players dragging with them then i've given them quite a lot like the inventory is huge and they have a bag of holding and they're using it quite profoundly so yeah, that's this chaotic um, character sheet. I hope I've um, explained it uh, well enough. If you have any questions, be feel free to ask them. Just gonna stare at the empty space for a bit and thinking of what I could stack in there for player items that are casual that they like the fighter, the bard, um, but also a spellcaster on um, like what everyone would casually drag with them. We have weapons, greatsword, halberd, warhammer, <laughs> a lute, a flute, a mole, and a quiver, maybe a bow, a long bow. Yeah, um, do also some things down as in why am I making this character sheet? Yeah, it, it is for both for fun and I hope to bring joy to, to the internet as well when I sell it for a really low balling price. Like it, it's in my head I can't allow it to be more expensive than 5 euros. So everyone will be able to enjoy it. And I know I'm going to give myself a big headache the minute I have to figure out like the, the front and have to do all of the line art because this is far from final and then start with the whole PDF formatting. <laughs> it's going to give me a big headache because I have no clue how to do the PDF format thingy. Like insert um, an image and then get it to do the PDF thingy. I'll, uh, I'll have to look up a bunch of tutorials to get that done. Needless to say, this is going to take me quite a bit, because... Whew. Especially if, if, we, if you can zoom in like that, and you can find the little box with fleas in them. That's going to take... Some work. A sad owl. <laughs> the dead chicken. Um, a lot of herbs, uh, the dried carrots trinket box, uh, a jar with eyeballs. It's it's really crazy other than the amount of stuff that you have for spell components and, and it's not even half of what, what I've been drawing. It's more. I can't even stuff it in there. <laughs> and I do want some space um, in, in between the items to show the in inside of the mimic. Because your character sheet is the mimic. That, that's the tactical joke, or the practical joke.
and as you can see I have lovely handwriting and it will be a lot of fun to decipher that when I start land. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> Ooh. But I wouldn't want it any other way. Uh, as for live streaming the line art, I'm still debating that part. And I'm fine with the whole brainstorming process because it's way more fun, it's interactive, people can comment and Oh, um, you're missing this and add this to the piece, uh, stuff like that. But when it comes down to line art, um, it, it, it comes down to, to me going on autopilot and often not even mentioning things or talking all that much because then I'd be too busy focusing on the exact little stripes and uh, things on the following layer like, oh, I'll have to draw it like so and so. So I, I am I'm not sure about that, like if, if it's even fun to watch. As for the creative part, heck yeah. I did mention long bow. And I'll be looking up some lovely long bow designs because I do want uh, to be intricate. Like, really go for it. This, this is just me taking notes of uh, what should be in there. These are official notes along with some handwriting that is uh, in need of desperate deciphering. <laughs> mm -hmm. so we have a bedroll, we have a cushion, holy water, holy symbol, a uh, quiver and... Um, it's a quiver and we have a quill and a bottle of ink. And a feather and a journal. Instruments and maybe I do want some something like a drum in the background. have to look up some more references about it but yeah that's a nice shape maybe this could also be the place where the magical items go regardless of that being the spell component department like a fine overlap and for that fine overlap, I would say our bag of holding is mighty fine. Has a very big nose. It doesn't look so grumpy, and I will I will get to it. But um, I'm I, I'm not using any references right now, so and I know where to go and find it. Could be hanging right over the halberd, right over there. Bloop. Clear enough.
it's like a harp is one of those things that a bot could um could potentially use and those things are quite annoying but easy to carry around if you have the smaller version so yeah that could be a thing A harp, any more weapons that could be interesting. Stick. Let's go, monk. Let's go, stick. Perfect stick. This will be a stick with some wrappers on it, some piece of cloth, and that will be it. It'll be stick. Fashioned, you know, tea time. I imagine this to be more of a metal piece so they can uh, hold up a fire and stuff like that. And their plates. To eat some utensils um work and knife and some cups Maybe cheese, because you know, why not? And why would you bring cheese on an adventure? Well, it could be many reasons. Maybe not this much. This is a bit, bit overdone, like unless they have uh, some sort of uh, giant red for a then uh, Mm -hmm. but, but a good chunk of cheese, why not? Yeah. And bread. Decorations. Clear enough, this bread. And some beef jerky.
Ooh, clothing. It's like they always have a spare outfit. Maybe a jacket. Extra pair of shoes. Put that over here, that's going on. Our entire wardrobe could be, could be up in here, like hanging around. And that's what we can have for it. Ooh, and ham. So, food. Maybe it's more fun to put it over here and have food in the background. Like wardrobe and the side wardrobe, there's the obvious food. Facial cow horn could be a thing. Maybe there's a jar with um, honey, honey jar. Some other delicious rations that I have yet to figure out what, what they are in. You know, just drawing casseroles everywhere. <laughs>
the amount of chalices that the party finds is always ridiculous as every adventuring party finds a chalice or three, two, four with a chalice and they always sell it but like it's nearly almost always that's the thing all right um done quite a lot scribbled a whole lot of ideas that look like an, an entire cluttering uh mess but once the line art starts it will still look like a cluttering mess exactly what we want or at least what i want going back to with the front get the sheet uh, where we're stranded today there's still some corners to be left to be filled in uh, valuables but either I'm gonna switch the line up soon or still have some ideas to brainstorm about if you have any questions feel free to join the discord and hit the general I'm going to end the stream and see if that some of my fellow friends uh, are online and streaming so we can raid and yes we can we have icy moo and they are streaming Minecraft. I believe they're doing Bed Wars. Amazing. So, we're, we're gonna go uh, rate Icy Moo, and I'll see you guys next week.